I like to keep track of the investments of successful investors to gain some ideas for investment opportunities that have a high likelihood of being both profitable and halal. Towards this end, I like to keep track of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio of investments. For those who are unfamiliar, Berkshire Hathaway is the company that is managed by Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is one of the most successful investors of our time, if not the most successful investor of our time. He has amassed a fortune of $82 billion from his investments. And I know you may be wondering if someone has $82 billion, do they owe Zakat? I'm not really sure. I haven't checked the prices of gold and silver today. I'll get back to you on that one. Since 1965, Berkshire Hathaway has averaged an annual growth rate in book value for its shareholders of around 19%, compared with 9% for the S&P 500 during the same period. In this video, I'd like to examine one of Berkshire Hathaway's larger investments, and that investment is, drumroll please, Apple stock. Specifically, I'm going to examine the cases for and against the halalness of Apple stock, as well as the prospects for profitability from making such an investment. So let's get started. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Rakan Kayeli and welcome to Practical Islamic Finance. My valuable analysis of Apple stock will come to you for the small price of smashing the like button, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell so you know when new videos are uploaded. Also, if you're looking for halal funding, consider fundmebff.com, the company I started which is offering interest-free halal funding that you can use for basically anything. So check us out, fundmebff.com. Additionally, if you are looking for a halal investment and you're looking to diversify your investments with something other than stocks, then you should also check out fundmebff.com and click on become an investor. Just so you know, by law, we can only accept people who have an annual income of at least $200,000. If that applies to you and you're looking for an investment that has earned double digit returns annually since its inception in the beginning of 2017, then check us out. All that information is in the description to this video. Before I start, for those of you who haven't read my article or watched my video on how to pick halal stocks, I strongly encourage you to do so. In that video, I explained that some of the questions that I like to used to help me ascertain whether a particular stock is halal or not are the following. The first question I ask is, is the company's primary business halal? In other words, can I describe the portion of the company's business that comes from haram sources as being trivial when compared to the size of the overall business? The second question I ask is, do I think the world is better off because this company exists? And then the third question I ask is basically a gut check. Am I okay with publicizing my investment in this particular stock? Now, as you've probably gathered, the answers to these questions are not always that clear cut. Accordingly, it's really difficult to say that an investment in a particular stock is certainly haram or certainly halal. Because typically the halalness of a particular stock will fall on a spectrum between certainly haram and certainly halal. So I think it's more accurate to assign a probability to a investment in a particular stock being halal rather than saying that it's certainly halal or certainly haram. And that's what I intend on doing when analyzing Apple's stock. For this purpose, I'll use a simple scale from one to 10 with one being certainly haram, 10 being certainly halal. Again, the halalness rating that I'm going to assign to Apple represents my own judgment based on what I know of the Apple stock. I encourage you to use your own judgment when you're assessing Apple's halalness and to make your decisions accordingly. So without further ado, let's start our analysis of the halalness of Apple stock and the prospects for profitability from investing in Apple. So we'll start with Apple's business. I'm assuming most all of you have heard of Apple, probably all of you have dealt with an Apple product at one point or another. Apple is most famous for its iPhones, it also sells laptops and iPads, it also has a slew of different services from Apple Music to Apple Pay, and according to its most recent quarterly filing, which is Q3 of 2019, its business breakdown was the following. 
50% of its revenue came from iPhone sales, 21% of its revenue came from services. This includes things like Apple Care, Apple Pay, iTunes, iCloud, and Apple Music. 11% of its revenue comes from Mac sales, which are their laptops, 9% from iPad sales, and 10% from wearables and accessories. None of the products that showed up in Apple's most recent quarterly filing are inherently haram. However, on August 20th of this year, Apple did introduce a credit card. It is not clear yet how this credit card is performing, but so far, all indications are that the interest it may collect from these credit cards represent a rather trivial amount of its overall business. To the extent that the interest Apple collects from its credit cards becomes a more significant part of its overall business, my halalness rating of Apple stock will go down correspondingly. Frankly, I don't see this happening in the near term since their credit card is rather lousy. It offers bottom of the barrel cashback returns and there's no sign up bonus, but that may change and it's something to keep an eye on for sure. The second question I like to ask when assessing the halalness of a stock is whether or not that company is an overall positive to the world. And so the question now is, is Apple an overall positive to the world? And I certainly think so. I mean, if you look at its technologies, they have produced a great amount of value for a large number of people. There is seldom a practical need or want that one may have that doesn't have an app that makes fulfilling that practical need easier, whether it's budgeting or keeping in touch with family and friends or keeping track of your health. Apple technologies have made these tasks easier for a huge segment of the human population. The third question I like to ask regarding the halalness of a particular stock is whether I feel comfortable publicizing an investment in that particular stock. And to be honest, they're issuing a credit card really rubbed me the wrong way. I know that it's a trivial amount of their business and I don't see that this is going to change anytime soon. But when you have so much resources at your fingertips, why would you succumb to the temptation of targeting low income people so that they can borrow for their consumption needs and you can charge them interest? It sort of makes me uncomfortable with investing in it. However, if I wanna be objective about it, I know that this business is a really small portion of Apple's overall business and therefore, Given everything I've said about its product, about the value that it produces for humanity, and about whether or not I feel comfortable publicizing an investment in Apple, the halalness rating I'm going to give for Apple is 8 out of 10. I dinged it two points because of its issuing of a credit card. Now, you can make of this rating what you want. I mean, act according to what makes you the most comfortable and in the way that you think you'll have a strong argument to make for yourself on the day of judgment. The second question I wanna examine is whether or not Apple is a good investment from a purely financial standpoint. And here I should mention that 5% of Apple stock is owned by Berkshire Hathaway. And 5% may not sound like a lot, but when you remember that Apple is a trillion dollar company now, 5% of a trillion is $50 billion. So this suggests that Warren Buffett has a strong degree of confidence in Apple for him to make such a large investment. However, I am not the type to follow blindly, even if it is Warren Buffett. So I've assembled a list of pros and cons for an Apple investment that I'd like to share with you. Starting with the pros. The first pro of an Apple investment is that Apple has a really strong brand. In fact, it was estimated that Apple's brand is the most valuable brand on earth with an estimated value of $215 billion. Now, brands are really important to companies because they can charge higher prices because consumers perceive the product as being of higher quality or a status symbol because of the strength of the brand. Apple customers' brand loyalty have created a rather strong moat around its business, particularly around their phone business, which accounts for roughly 50% of their revenues, as we saw. I'll let Warren Buffett explain this point more. When you go into a 
a drugstore, uh, 7-Eleven or something, and you say, I would like a Snickers bar, and the owner says, oh, I've got something at, 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 at 10 cents off the Snickers bar. You say, give me the Snickers. And if he doesn't give you the Snickers, you go across the street and buy the Snickers. Uh, brands, brands are moats. And I would say that, incidentally, that the, that the iPhone uh, you know, has a terrific moat. I mean, people that have an iPhone, they want to continue with the product that they've got. They want, they want the new version. It's just easier for them. They've they learned how to do everything, and their life's built around it and all of that. And moats are very useful. The second pro of investing in Apple is that it pays a dividend. And its dividend yield, last I checked, was around 1.5%. Dividend yield is basically the dividend divided by the share price. Now, 1.5% is nothing to scoff at, especially considering that Apple has $210 billion in cash on its hand. If you take debt out of that, it has around $100 billion in cash left net of any debt. So this cash is likely going to be used to increase dividends in the future especially since they've stated in their most recent earnings call that they want to go to a cash neutral position. The third pro of investing in Apple stock is that it's reasonably priced. If you look at the price to earnings ratio, basically the share price divided by the earnings per share, you'll notice that Apple has a forward PE ratio of around 17. Now this is a really reasonable ratio for big tech companies. So those are three prominent pros or pluses, positives, of investing in Apple. Now for the cons. So the cons, very simply, of investing in Apple is that, in my opinion at least, they're too reliant on the strength of their brand and not reliant enough on actual innovation. Frankly, I don't remember any meaningful innovation from Apple ever since Steve Jobs passed away. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy animated emojis as much as the next person, but I would expect something more from a company that has $200 billion in cash. So while I will concede that competing with Apple's phones is not an easy task, at least in the near term, I don't see Apple growing from here that much. Eventually, their brand will lose value if they don't innovate and provide truly better products that can justify their higher price point. I personally have had a version of their phone for the last 10 years continuously and that's probably been the case because I haven't had any problems with any of their phones and I've gotten used to their operating system so there's a lot of inertia involved here but I'm not really sure how long this will last. If another company comes along with something compelling enough, I may switch. Frankly, I've gotten kind of tired of shelling out a thousand dollars every couple of years for another phone with a slightly better camera. So my overall rating for an investment in Apple stock is a solid meh. For the next five years, I see it as both low risk and low return. It's not a terrible investment, but if you're going through the trouble of picking a particular stock as opposed to just investing in a well-diversified ETF or mutual fund, then the stock that you pick should be an amazing opportunity. You should be head over heels over the stock that you're going out of your way to buy individually and overweight on. And I'm not sure Apple meets that threshold. And on the topic of investments, do you know what the best investment is? An investment in yourself. That's why you should check out Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn about pretty much any topic. You can also make your own course and upload it and get paid whenever anyone watches your course. So it's a really good opportunity to both learn a new skill and to teach others and make some money off of teaching others. So Check out the link in the description. You'll get two months of premium membership for free using the link in the description below. The description is becoming so long. Okay, the description now is an essay, so uh, you may or may not find the link, who knows. If you would like for me to analyze a particular stock in the future or address a particular topic, comment below. I read all comments on my videos. I don't reply to all of them, I try to. 
but I definitely read all of them. So leave your requests in the comments. I hope you found this video beneficial. Until next time, take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.